Now, I came to this idea of bliss because uh, in Sanskrit, uh, which is the great spiritual language of the world, and they know all about it and have known about it for a long time, uh, the transcendent is transcendent. But there are three terms that bring you to the brink. You might say the jumping off place to the ocean. And the three terms are sat, chit, ananda. And sat, the word sat means being. Chit means full consciousness. And ananda means rapture. So I thought, I don't know whether my consciousness is full consciousness or not. I don't know whether my being is a uh, proper being or not, but I do know where my rapture is. So let me hang on to rapture, and that'll bring me both being and full consciousness, and it works. What was your rapture? Well, it started with Indians, and then it went on into more and more mythological matters, and the realm of the arts, music, and uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the when I met Jean, then the dance came in, and um, this is uh, this is it. Just stay with that. And one doesn't have to be um, a poet to do this. Carpenters do it. A poet is simply one who's made a profession and a lifestyle of uh, being in touch with that. Most people have to be concerned with other things. Uh, they get themselves uh, involved in uh, economic and other uh, activities, or you're drafted into a war that isn't the one you're interested in. And uh, how to, um, to hold to this... Um, umbilical, you might say, uh, in, in those circumstances, that's a technique each one has to work out for himself somehow. But uh, most people living in that realm of uh, what might be called uh, occasional concerns, uh, they all have the capacity that's waiting to be awakened to, to move to this other place. I know it. I've seen it happen in students. A uh, wonderful way of teaching we had at Sarah Lawrence, where I taught for 38 years, uh, would ha I'd have an individual conference with every one of my students at least once a fortnight for half an hour or so. And there you're talking on about the things that students ought to be reading, and suddenly you hit on something that the student really responds to. You can see the eyes open, the complexion changes, a life possibility has opened there. And all you can say to uh, yourself is, I hope this child hangs on to that, you know. They may or may not. But when they do, they've found a life right there in the room with you. How would you advise somebody to tap that spring of eternal life, that joy that is right there? Well, we're having experiences all the time, which uh, uh, may, on occasion, render some sense of this, a little intuition of where your joy is. Grab it. No one can tell you what it's going to be. I mean, you've got to learn to recognize your own depths. Do you ever have this sense when you're following your bliss, as I have at moments, of being helped by hidden hands? All the time. It, it, it's miraculous. I even have a superstition that has grown on me as the result of invisible hands coming all the time. Namely, that if you do follow your bliss, you put yourself on a kind of track that has been there all the while waiting for you. And, uh, and the life that you ought to be living is the one you're living somehow. And uh, when you can see it, uh, you, you begin to deal with people who are in the field of your bliss. And they open w doors to you. I say, follow your bliss and don't be afraid. And doors will open where you didn't know they were going to be. Do you ever have sympathy for the man who has no invisible means of support? Who has no invisible means? Yes, he's the one that evokes compassion, you know, the poor chap. And, and to see him stumbling around when uh, the water of immortal life is right there is, uh, is uh, really, it evokes one's pity. Right there? Hmm? Right there? You yes. believe that? Yes. The waters of eternal life? Right there. Where? wherever you are, if you're following your bliss. I mean, you're, you're having that joy, that, that uh, refreshment, that life all the time.